In order to get a general summary of when this report was created, who it was created by, how it was generated, and what it is, you can actually right-click on a chart and choose Properties. This provides you a lot of information just on the General tab. As you'll see here, the last time this was modified was October 6th. It took three seconds to run. It's based off of sashelp.shoes data that was pulled into book number four on the workbook. The main data source from SAS is sashelp.shoes. And there was no data constraints enabled. On the Execution tab, you can specify what the ref refresh defaults for this object are. So that each time a user opens this, they will be able to see updated results. And on the Appearance tab, I can immediately change the style. When selecting properties on data tables, you actually have a, a different uh, option, a, a tab called Advanced. This allows you to uh, specify whether users can adjust column lists. SAS results can be forwarded on to PowerPoint or Word utilizing the SAS option, SAS, Tools, Send To, and then Word or PowerPoint selection. You can choose which SAS content to forward. You can do one or all. It is utilizing the PowerPoint uh, title area as well as the uh, SAS object, which as you can see links right back to the Excel worksheet and has the same properties. You can also go to SAS and Modify to change this object directly in PowerPoint, utilizing the same user interface. It is important to note while we're in PowerPoint that you can analyze data directly from this or run SAS stored processes. However, you are unable to open data sources into the slide, as data sources usually are much larger than uh, PowerPoint can handle. An unsupported SAS feature is that by using Microsoft Outlook with the Word Editor on for new messages, the add-in to Microsoft Office add-in is also available for use. You can analyze data and run SAS stored processes from this mechanism. When you reopen your data workbook from Excel, you can choose Refresh Multiple or Refresh Single uh, to update the SAS objects with new data. The Refresh Single opens the active data table uh, and refreshes the active view. The Refresh Multiple actually allows you to pick and choose which items you want to refresh. You can see you have a SAS status menu that lists off which items have completed and which ones uh, need, uh, need to complete. Finally, if you have any errors, you'll note you have a, an error message that allows you to view the log, continue, or abort. The output uh, in the log will look familiar to SAS programmers as this is simply a SAS log. Stored processes are available to users um, via the SAS reports menu item. Users will be able to access folders defined for them in the SAS metadata. An extension to SAS stored process task, Visual Basic programmers can add custom tasks to the Analyze Data screen. These custom tasks are interfaces that are not limited by the SAS stored process interface.
Visual Basic programmers can create dynamic drop-down boxes, customize the layout of the UI, and then kick off the store process. An example of the custom interface is seen here. This initially appears as an enlisted option in the SAS task or Analyze Data Interface. Note that each of these boxes is populated from SAS datasets. Some options are cascading, meaning they are dependent on selections from other boxes listed. Visual Basic Studio or some other VBC compiler is required to develop a custom add-in. Moderate experience in Visual Basic is also a requirement of the developer. Additional information on how to accomplish this is available from SAS.